Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the recording for Saturday, July 22nd, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And on the Hebrew calendar, it is the month of Av, the fourth day, and the year 5783. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. I have a couple of announcements for this upcoming week. We are continuing our Bible study, and we will be reading the entire book of Romans this week uh, from the English Standard Version. So we will be covering chapters 1 through 16. Also, for those that are involved in um, the class, we are meeting Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our free conference call.com channel. Um, and this is the class hearing from God. Also, this week we will be um, having a service um, on the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av, and we will be reading the Book of Lamentations. Um, yes, we are still in the period, the three week period that's known as the Dire Straits. And this is the final nine day period. Um, that began on Rosh Kadesh Av, uh, the first day of Av. Uh, so um, we will also be having Tisha B'Av uh, um, a service for that this week. Also, I just wanted to mention that I am continuing to pre-record all, all of the services, and I'm glad that I have. Because yesterday <laughs> I ran into a problem. We were going going strong for like uh, you know from the end of May to yesterday. Everything was going well, and I thought maybe you know it, you know if it continued to do that I could back off. But uh, no chance of that. Um, I had a problem uploading to YouTube um, where it actually everything uploaded, but it wouldn't transfer to YouTube. And apparently there's um, there there's some issues and there's there's some some upgrades of of the service so hopefully it will get better um, but I had to go to the free service so when uh, Rosh Kadesh Av gets posted you're going to notice on YouTube some of the graphics are cut off and that's because the service that I used did not um, did not use the whole picture that you know the thumbnail that should have been on there um and then i finally had gotten that done and went to upload it to to rumble so it was ready on rumble and rumble was down apparently uh, no one was able to upload anything it 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 would show you could hover over it and it showed that it was there but nothing was nothing was uploading so I was able to do that today so it is ready so while we're having all these little little glitches going on and issues i am going to just continue uh, to pre-record and it's only going to really affect uh those who are following following the ministry on youtube and rumble because you're going to get the services early uh, in comparison to when i do post them but we need to be sure that we have everything ready and ready for posting on the actual time frame that they're supposed to be posted. So that's the reason why we're doing this at this point. And I don't see that changing anytime soon uh, if we're having more issues. And so that is that is the update on that. Um, so those are really um, the announcements that I have. So we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Avina Mokino, our Father, our King, we just thank you for today. We thank you. This is the Sabbath. This is the seventh day of the week. This is the day that you sanctified as holy, and we are here to fully honor you and rest in you. And it is an honor to be in your presence, Father God. This is the day that you sanctified as holy. And you, as a perfect father, gave us that perfect example when you created every, everything in six days and you rested on the seventh. And then you incorporated it with Moses in the Ten Commandments, explaining very clearly about Sabbath. And we are here to honor you and 
the Sabbath. Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit lead us, guide us, and direct us through the entire Shabbat service. Open the eyes of our heart, open the ears of our heart, that we may be perfectly receptive to receiving your word, incorporating it in our being, in our spirit, in our walk with you, Lord. We love studying your word. We love hearing your word. We love studying your Torah. Father God, we give you all of our praise, all of our thanks, and all honor and glory belong solely to you. And we pray this prayer in the name above all names, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8, it says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai, your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. And stay with me now, the Lord's greatest commandment, the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Machuto Leolam Vayad Hero Israel Adonai is our God Adonai is one Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And the second greatest commandment Yeshua said, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah, standing before God, we're going to say three of the blessings, the first blessing is for the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. The great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all, who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name, in love, king, helper, savior, and shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, Master of Might, and who can compare with you, O King, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish? You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is Kedusha, holiness. You are holy and your name is holy and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Matavu, how lovely, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwelling, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor, O God. In your great love, answer me with the truth of your salvation. In Etz Kaim, the tree of life declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happier those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old, by Yom Hahu in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Echad, and his name Echad. And the word Echad means one or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, amen, in the world that he created 
by his will. And may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout. And may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime and in your days and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel speedily and soon and say, amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Neten Lanu Devar Hakayim, Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now, Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, sounded the shofar to gather B'nai Israel for worship. We're going to sound a shofar now. In a moment, I am going to pause it for you to listen to praise and worship. For those of you who have been following us for quite some time, you know that we do not incorporate music in these recordings in, in part one and part two of Shabbat. It is clearly just the scriptures and the service. However, if you follow us on a social media, what I normally do, uh, and I do post to four social media platforms as well as I, an email list of people that I I send the service to. So I do post to Facebook, to MeWe, to Gab, and to USA.life, the full service. So what I usually do is I will I will start, uh, I will actually post the scriptures for, for the Shabbat service, and then I will post a series of songs that you can, there are suggestions for part one. Um, and then I'll, I will post um, part one and part two of Shabbat service for both YouTube and Rumble because we have audiences on both platforms there as well. And then I will post another series of songs and that is suggestions for part two. However, if you have your own praise and worship that you prefer to listen to, that's fine too. Um, these are suggestions. Um, and actually, as it turns out, it is, it's a lot of posting. Yes. And I'll, I'll, those of you that do follow me on social media I know that you get a lot of posts from me and that's the reason why um but there's a there's a there's a positive there's a positive end to this too when we first started just to give you a little background when we first started posting on the social media platforms and and actually uploading to like youtube and and all people were losing their platforms for incorporating music um and so we decided not to even go there. Now, I know a lot of people are doing it, again, with a disclaimer. But in looking at, you know, the way we began doing it and doing it this way, um, actually, it is it is a better approach, even though there's a lot of posts. Um, because if I were to join everybody else and add music here uh, to to this recording, Yes, I can mention the artists and, and what have you, but they are not getting the monetary credit for it. And, uh, and, and really, um, by, the, by the point that we actually post these, post the songs, we're actually posting 
you're actually getting redirected to the artist's YouTube channel. So this is their music. They should get credit for it. So by doing that, when you're getting redirected to their YouTube channel, they get your views that you're coming to their YouTube channel. And YouTube recognizes that. And uh, if they're monetized, and many of them are, they get paid that way. So this is a good way to support our, our praise and worship artists. So that's the, one of the main reasons why there's a lot of posts. Um, and I don't think we're going to do it any other way at this point in time. Um, because, yes, we want to support the artists that bring us anointed praise and worship. This is their calling. Um for the kingdom of God. And we need to all work together and help one another. So by doing, doing it this way, we're actually helping these artists. Now I do use <clears throat> songs um, from artists that, that are supported by lab labels, but um, many of them are independent artists that I actually use their music from. So yes, uh, any help that we can give them that helps to keep them going as well. So I'm also going to mention that when you get redirected to their YouTube channel, go back and take a look at what what else they have on their YouTube channel. Also, many of them have a blue hyperlink in which you can click onto and it'll redirect you to maybe a web page or or a shop you know where you can actually purchase their music and if you're able to do that, um by all means, that's another way of supporting these wonderful artists. So with that being said, I am just going to pause it for you to do some praise and worship. And when you're, when you're finished doing praise and worship, then hit play. And we are going to continue on with the Torah portion and the half Torah portion for this week for part one. And then we'll close that out and take a short break. And then you can come back. We'll come back with part two. So I'm going to pause it now for praise and worship. Okay, this is a single parashat this week. We've been having a lot of double parashats this, this year. Um, last year we didn't um, have so many because we had a leap year. So that meant an additional month. And the month of Adar ends up being broken into Adar 1 and Adar 2. So we have less of double parashats during those years but this is not one of those years so we get a lot of double parashats this week however is just parashat devarim um, and that means words so we are going to be reading from the torah portion deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 3 verse 22 and here we are this is the fifth book written by Moses. It's the fifth book of the Torah and final book of the Torah. So we are, once we get closer to the end of, of Deuteronomy, we know we're going to be entering a new Hebrew calendar year, uh, the civil calendar year, and that will be in the month of Tishri, Tishri 1, when we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. So then the whole cycle of the Torah starts all over again. So anyway, we are here in the final book of the Torah, Deuteronomy, and we're going to begin uh, with chapter one. Devarim, the words that Moses spoke. Parashat Devarim, meaning words. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness in the Arabah opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Zahab. It is 11 days journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And it really should have only taken them, the children of Israel, 11 days to get to where they were going when they had the great exodus. But as we saw, uh, they, <laughs> they presented many challenges along the way. And so um, they ended up in wandering for 40 years because of not having faith, uh, for mumbling, grumbling. Uh, and we've seen all the, all the things that poor, poor Moses encountered in, in leading the people. Now Moses spoke to Benai Israel according to all Adonai had commanded him for them in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month. After he had struck down Sihon, king of the Amorites, 
who lived in Heshbon and Og, king of the Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth and Edre. Across the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this Torah, saying, Adonai, our God, spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn, journey on, and enter the hill country of the Amorites and all their neighbors in the Arabah, the hill country, the lowland, the Negev, and by the seashore, the land of the Canaanites and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Enter and possess the land that Adonai swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their descendants after them. The bad report and poor response. I spoke to you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear the burden of you by myself. Adonai, your God, has multiplied you, and here you are today, like the stars of the heavens in number. Remember, that was promised to Abraham that that would occur. May Adonai, God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times as many as you are, and may he bless you just as he promised you. How can I bear your load and burden and bickering by myself? Choose for yourselves wise and discerning men, well known to your tribes, and I will appoint them as your heads. You answered me and said the thing you have said to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, men who are wise, and well known and appointed them as heads over you, leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties, leaders of tens, and officials for your tribes. I commanded your judges at that time, saying, Hear cases between your brothers and judge fairly between a man and his brother or the outsider with him. You must not show partiality in judgment. See, this is what a good judge, <laughs> look at our judges around the world, and, and the way they are today, you can you can you can judge judge the judges based on on the criteria right here that was set through Adonai and and explained through the voice of Moses to the people. You must hear the small and the great alike. Fear no man, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. I commanded you at that time everything you should do. Then we journeyed from Horeb and went through all that great and terrible wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as Adonai our God commanded us. Then we came to Kadesh Barnea. Barnea, I said to you, you have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which Adonai our God is giving to us. See, Adonai your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession as Adonai, God of your fathers, has promised you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. And all of you came near to me and said, let's send men ahead of us to explore the land for us and bring back word about the way we should go up and the cities we will enter. The idea seemed good to me. So I took 12 men from among you, one man for each tribe, and they turned and went up into the hill country and they came into the Wadi Eskol and spied it out. They took in their hands some of the fruit of the land and brought it down to us. They also brought back word to us and said, Good is the land that Adonai our God is giving to us. Yet you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of Adonai your God. In your tents you grumbled and said, Because Adonai hates us, he has brought us out from the land of Egypt to hand us over to these Amorites to destroy us. Where are we going? Our brothers have discouraged our hearts, saying, the people are greater and taller than we are. The cities are great and fortified up to the heavens. Besides, we have even seen the children of, of Anakim there, the giants. Okay. So, yes, remember, the ten, 10 of the 12 spies came back with a bad report, discouraged the people. They lost that faith vision. God gave them a faith vision when they were still in Egypt and made a promise to them, and promised them all along the way. And here they are, right on the edge of going into the promised land, to getting to their goal, and this is what happens. Then I said to you, don't tremble or be afraid of them. Adonai, your God who goes before you, he himself will fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt, before your own eyes, and in the wilderness. 
where you saw how Adonai your God carried you as the man carries his son everywhere you went until you came to this place. Yet for all this, you did not trust in Adonai your God, the one who goes before you on the way to scout a place for you to camp and to show you the way you should go in fire by night and in cloud by day. When Adonai heard the tone of your words, he was angry and swore an oath, saying, Not one of these men of this evil generation will see the good land that I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He will see it. Yet to him and his children, I will give the land that he has walked on, because he has followed Adonai wholeheartedly. Adonai was even angry with me on your account, saying, You will not enter there either. Joshua, son of Nun, who stands before you, will enter there. Encourage him, for he will enable Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, whom you said would become plunder, and your children, who today have no knowledge of good or evil, they will enter there. To them I will give it, and they will possess it. But as for you, turn around and journey into the wilderness by way of the Sea of Reeds. Then you answered and said to me, We have sinned against Adonai. We will go up and fight, just as Adonai our God commanded us. So each of you strapped on his weapons of war, fighting I figuring it was easy to go up to the hill country. But Adonai said to, said to me, tell them, do not go up and fight, for I am not with you, and you will be defeated by your enemies. So I told you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the command of Adonai and presumptuously went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in, the, in that hill country came out against you, and they chased you as bees do, and scattered you from Ser to Horma. Then you returned and wept before Adonai, but Adonai did not listen to your voice or pay attention to you. So you stayed in Kadesh many days, like the days you have had spent before. Chapter 2. Now, what what Moses is doing and what he started doing also in, in, in Numbers was going through their journey. So he is he is continuing to recall the wilderness journey in chapter 2 as well. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way to the, re- the Sea of Reeds, just as Adonai told me. We went around the hill country of Seir for many days. Adonai spoke to me, saying, You have gone around this hill country long enough. Turn to the north. Command people, saying, You are about to cross into the territory of your relatives, the sons of Esau, who dwell in Seir. They will be afraid of you, so be very careful. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land, not even a footprint, because I have given the hill country of Seir to Esau as a possession. You are to buy food from them for money so that you may eat, and you are also to buy water from them for money so that you may drink. For Adonai your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. He has known your wanderings through this great wilderness. These forty years, Adonai, your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. So he went on past. So we went on past our relatives, the sons of Esau, who dwell in Seir, away from the way of the Arabah, from Elath, and Ezion Geber. We turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Adonai said to me, do not harass Moab or engage them in battle, for I will not give you any of his land for possession, because I have given Ar to the children of Lot for a possession. The Emim used to live there. So that's the, a great and numerous people, as tall as the Anakim. So, so here's another race of giants, the Emim, Anakim. Um, these people are also are considered Raphaim like the Anakin, but the Moabites call them Emim. Now the Horites used to live in Seir, but the sons of Esau drove them out and destroyed them from before themselves and settled in their places, just as Israel did to the, to the land of its possession that Adonai gave to them. So there was definitely giants in the land, and we know that there was, because we know when David fought um, Goliath, and Goliath had brothers as well. Now rise up and cross over the Wadi Zered. So we went over the Wadi Zered, the time that we traveled from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the Wadi Zered was 38 years until all the generation of men of war from within the camp came to an end as Adonai had sworn to them. 
Indeed, the hand of Adonai was against them to destroy them from within the camp until they came to their end. And Adonai did say that, you know, that first generation was going to die out in the wilderness. And it would be the next generation that would get to go into the promised land. Now, when all the men of war had finished dying from among the people, Adonai spoke to me, saying, Today you are about to cross the border of Moab at Ar. When you come opposite the sons of Ammon, do not harass or provoke them. For I will not give you any of the land of the sons of Ammon for a possession, because I have given it to the sons of Lot for a possession. They also... That also is considered a land of Rephaim. Rephaim used to live there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumim. So there's another uh, name for giants. A great numerous people as tall as the Anakim. But Adonai destroyed them from before them, and the Ammonites dispossessed them and settled in their place. It was just as Adonai did for the sons of Esau, who dwell in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites before them. They drove them out and settled in their place, even to this day. As for the Avim, who lived in, and that's A-V-V-I-M, who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaftorim, who came from, from Crete, destroyed them and settled in their place. So there was a lot of names for the giants, um, as you can see. The defeat of Sihon and O. Rise up, journey on, and cross over the Wadi Arnon. See, I have handed over Sihon, the Amorite king of Eshbon, and his land, begin to possess it. Engage him in battle. This very day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the peoples everywhere under heaven. When they hear the report about you, they will tremble and twist in anguish because of you. So I sent messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to Sihon, king of Eshbon, with words of shalom, saying, Let me pass through your land. I will only go by way of the road. I will not turn to the right or to the left. You will sell me food for money so that I may, may eat and give me water for money so that I may drink. Just let me pass through on foot as the sons of Esau dwelling in Seir and the Moabites and Ar did for me until I crossed over the Jordan into the land that Adonai our God is giving to us. But Sihon king of Heshbon would not let us pass by him because Adonai our God stiffened his spirit and hardened his heart in order to hand him over to you this very day. Adonai said to me, see, I have begun to give Sihon and his land over to you, begin to take possession in order to take hold of his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Jahaz. Adonai, our God, gave him over to us, and we struck him down, along with his sons and all his people. We captured all his cities at that time, and utterly put under a ban of judgment every city men women and children we left no survivor we took only the livestock as plunder for ourselves as the spoils of the city cities we captured from aurora aurora and a that's a r o e r which is on the edge of the wadi arnon and a city by the wadi all the way up to the gilead there was not a town too high for us at a night our god gave everything over to us only you did not come near the land of the sons of ammon along the Wadi Jabbat and the cities of the hill country and wherever Adonai, our God, had commanded. Chapter 3. And we're only going to uh, go from one to uh, verse 1 to 22 this week. We will be picking up the rest of chapter 3 next week with uh, Parashat Vayekhanon. Next, we turned and went up, up, up the way to the Bashan king Og of the Bashan came out against us, he and all his people, for battle at Edri. But Adonai said to me, Do not fear him, for I have handed him over, and all his people and his land you will do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. So Adonai our God also handed over King Og of the Bashan and all his people, and we struck him down until no survivor was left. We captured all the cities at that time. There was not a town that we did not take from them. Sixty cities, the whole region of Argob, the kingdom of Og in the Bashan, all these were cities fortified with high walls, gates, and bars. In addition to a great many unwalled towns, we utterly destroyed them, just as we did to Sihon, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying every city, men, women, and children. But all the livestock and the spoils of the cities we took as plunder for ourselves. So at that time, we took from the 
hand of the two kings of the Amorites, the land across the Jordan from the Wadi Arnon to Mount Hermon. Sidonians call Hermon Syrian, and the Amorites, the Amorites call it Sinir. We took all the cities of the plain and all the Gilead and and all the Bashan as far as Selka and Edri, cities of the kingdom of Og in the Bashan. For only King Og of the Bashan survived from the remnant of the Raphaim. In fact, his bed was made of iron. Is it not in Rabbah of the Ammonites? Nine cubits was its length and four cubits its width according to the cubit of a man. So he was... Also, you know, they were both giants, the, the, the kings that they um, actually defeated. Possession east of the Jordan. This land only took in possession at that time from Aurora, Aurora by the Wadi Arnon and half the hill country of the Gilead and its cities I gave to the Reubenites and the Gadites. The rest of the Gilead and all of the Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half tribe of Manasseh. All the region of the Argob, all the Bashan is called the land of the Raphaim. Jer, son of Manasseh, took all the region of Argob as far as the border of the Gezerites and the Mechathites. We, I'm sorry, he called them the Bashan after his own name, Havoth, Jer's villages, as it is the case to this day. To Makir, I gave the Gilead, to the Reubenite and the Gadites. I gave from the Gilead as far as the Wadi Arna in the middle of the Wadi as the border, and as far as Jabbok, the Wadi that is the border of the sons of Ammon, and the Arabah with the Jordan as the border from Kinneret as far as the sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, under the slopes of Pisgah eastward. I commanded you at that time, saying, Adonai your God has given you this land to possess it. Ready for battle, you will cross over ahead of your brothers, Benai Israel, all the men of valor, only your wives and your little ones and your livestock. I know that you have much livestock. They may stay in your cities that I have given you until Adonai gives rest to your brothers as he has for you. And they also possess the land that Adonai your God is giving them across the Jordan. Then you may return each man to his possession that I have given you. I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that Adonai your God has done to these two kings. Adonai will do the same to all the kingdoms you are about to cross into. You must not fear them, for it is Adonai your God who fights for you. And that is the end of the Torah portion. So we're going to do a quick recap on that and then move on to the half Torah. So last week's parasha, Montot and Masai, concluded the Torah portion portions in the book of Numbers, also known as Be'emid Bar, with Israel standing on the banks of the Jordan, ready to cross into the promised land. This week, uh, we're beginning the fifth book of the five books of Moses, the uh, of the Torah, Devarim or Deuteronomy, and the book starts with, these are the words, Devarim, words. These are the words Moses spoke. Words are powerful. They can bring life and blessing or death and destruction. So we need to be careful. Um, in Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The Torah itself draws attention to the power of words in the first verse of the first book of Moses, which is Genesis. In the beginning, in Bereshit, uh, God created. The entire universe with the power of his spoken words. Amen. In the Brit Harsha, uh, the New Covenant, the first chapter of Yochanan, John, it seems to mirror the opening verses of Genesis. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeshua, Jesus, the living Word of God, became flesh and lived among us. The connection between words and the wilderness journey, we have the people poised to enter the promised land at this point. Standing on the banks of the Jordan, Moses knows his life is coming to an end. But before his death, he recounts to Israel their story as a community. Now remember, this is the next generation, so he wants to be sure that he understands 
where they've been, uh, where they're going, and everything in between. Um, so he's telling their story as a community, as a nation, and rebukes them. When the Lord heard what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore, not a man of this evil generation shall see the good land I swore to give to your forefathers. It should have been an 11-day journey. Only 160 to 170 miles turned into a 40-year exercise in futility. They wandered in the wilderness until they died, all except Joshua and Caleb. Now we wonder, why did Moses dredge up such an old and painful history since this is not the generation that was involved in it? But it was necessary to prepare them for leaving the wilderness and crossing over to the Jordan and to the Promised Land to know their history. History is important, as we know. If we exile history, if we cancel history, we 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 as human beings tend to repeat history. So we need to learn from history and not repeat the mistakes of the past. Amen? Amen. The children of Israel who had failed to possess the land because of their own rebellion and grumbling needed to face the truth that their sin had prevented them from entering the promised land. They also needed to forgive themselves in order to move on. So there was a healing process that was taking place by this and also strengthening them for moving forward in faith. In essence, Moses asks the people to examine themselves. How did we get here? How is it that an 11-day trip took 40 years? Sometimes we need to ask ourselves the same question in order to finally exit our own wilderness. What is holding us back with our faith vision? We need to be aware of those things. Now, of course, God, in his perfect timing, um, we need to follow, too. We need to be in the will of God. But if we're supposed to be at a certain goal at a certain time um, and it's not happening, then we need to examine what is it that we're doing to hold ourselves back. We need to walk forward in faith. What do we do or say or fail to do or say to arrive here? We need to face truth. Not about others, but about ourselves. As Yeshua said, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The children of Israel had constantly blamed Moses for their wilderness experience. In the end, they needed to face the hard truth. It wasn't Moses' fault. It was their own fault. Their own negative attitudes and words kept them in the wilderness. They lost faith at the beginning. and They made the golden calf. Uh, so much happened. Um, through that course of 40 years, as, as we have read with each Torah portion. Through Moses, God told this new generation, you have stayed long enough in this mountain, break camp in advance. See, I have given you this land. Go in and possess it. The Hebrew word for stayed in this verse is Shavet, which means to sit, remain, or dwell. There's a time to stop sitting in one place and a, a time to get up and move forward in faith. But before we do this, we need to take time to look at our journey and face the truth, repent and determine to be obedient to God and trust him. The problem was, is they, they were, there were so many times they didn't trust in God. This was a generation that saw the wonders that God did for them. Their clothing didn't wear out in 40 years. They had food. They never lacked for anything. God took care of them through this whole journey. So, um, but they, they still lack faith. Blaming others for our wilderness experience will never move us forward or set us free. The power of words. So we need to be careful what we speak. We don't want to speak curses over ourselves because negativity is usually, you know, we're speaking negative things, which we want to speak positive things. We want to speak life. Who doesn't want to see God's goodness in the land of the living? Who doesn't want to experience the abundant life that Yeshua has promised? To do so, we must guard ourselves from, from the Shan Hara, which is Hebrew for an evil tongue. God wants to use words to nourish, encourage, and build up his people, not to tear down, criticize, and fault, find fault. Let no corrupt word proceed out of our mouth. 
for what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And that is found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 and 31. That's one of the reasons that the Word of God tells us to put on our armor, including the shield of faith, to quench all the fiery darts or arrows of the evil one. Words are important. We must never underestimate their, their power. The God of Israel is a refuge from words that have been maliciously spoken. Psalm 64, verses 2 to 3 says, Keep me safe from the secret purposes of wrongdoers, from the band of the workers of evil who make their tongues sharp, like a sword and whose arrows are pointed even bitter words. Matthew chapter 7 verse 2 says, When we use our words to criticize, condemn, or run down people, we bring the same judgment upon ourselves. So many believers are poor in finances, sick in their body, weak in faith, and just plain miserable because they indulge in speaking unkind, critical, perverse, and, or malicious words. For example of this, we need to look no further than the story of Miriam speaking ill against her brother Moses in an, er, in an earlier Torah portion. Because she gossiped and spoke critically of Moses, she was struck with skin, the skin disease of leprosy, which, which uh, in Hebrew is known as the Arat. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, Yeshua warned us that we will be judged for every idle word we speak. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. The prophet Isaiah, like Moses, understood what kind of impact our words can have on our lives and the lives of others. While seeing a vision of the Lord seated on his throne in the temple, he cried out, Woe to me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And that was seen in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Why did Isaiah, the great prophet of God, feel completely undone in God's presence? What brought on this terrible sense of his own sinfulness in contrast to the holiness of God? By his own admission, it was because he was a man of unclean lips, and he lived among a people of unclean lips. So, um... Isaiah was able to see that as well. You know, we also have to look at the other possibility, and it is possible that the people, um, they were quite content not to move forward once they had received the Ten, ten Commandments um, at Mount Sinai, or uh, the other name for it is, is Horeb. Um, they were no longer under bondage, and the easiest thing to do would be to just stay there and, and follow the rules that, uh, you know, that, that the Lord had given to Moses. Change can be difficult. That's the other. That's the other thing, um, and and they were afraid too. There there was fear too that, and we know fear is not of God. So fear overtook them. And as, of course, when they heard about the size of the people in the land that they were about ready to cross over, they were very fearful, and they just thought that you know that they couldn't do this. So fear overtook them and caused them to be defeated instead of walking in faith and trust in the God that led them to the promised land and was going to lead them through it and give them everything that he promised. Change can be difficult. It takes effort to cope with a new situation, but life is a journey. We are not meant to stand still and stagnate. We are meant to move forward and accomplish things. Accomplish things for the kingdom of heaven in particular, we are ambassadors. When you're born again and saved, we are ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven. So we've got a mission to do, and our great commission is to share the gospel. We need to get that gospel out to every nook and cranny of this planet. We want Yeshua to return, and one of the one one of the ways we can we can help to bring bring his return is to get, is to um, do what we're supposed to do um, and that is the great commission sharing sharing Yeshua with as many people as we can we want to take as many souls as we can to heaven with us amen amen we also saw Moses was reminding um, the new generation that before um, they left uh, 
Mount Sinai or Horeb. Uh, he had to create a system of leaders because it just, it became way too much for him to carry the burden of everyone. There were too many, and it was really uh, wearing him down. And unfortunately, um, once again, the people believed the majority report over the true report. They believed the fake news of the, of the 10. And it, it wasn't completely fake because they did say what they saw. They reported what they saw, but they were, they, they instilled fear in the people because they lacked faith and it, it just spilled over to the people. Believing the majority report was contrary to everything that they had witnessed and experienced in the entire time they had been journeying, God had proved powerfully and miraculously on their behalf, both in Egypt and in the desert. I mean, here is our God who parted the Red Sea so they would be able to cross on dry land uh, and cross on dry land and their enemies would not ever reach them. And he had proven himself by going ahead of them and charting the way that they should go. They only had to follow. There was no reason to think that God would, would bring them to the edge of the promised land only to desert them and leave them on their own device, to their own device. Um, he wasn't going to abandon them. He never planned to abandon them. He was going to give them everything that he promised. So Moses reminded the new generation of the devastating consequences for their parents' lack of faith and that the entire generation died in the wilderness and also reminded, reminded the people that he was also going to die in the wilderness because of the, the previous generation. And, and Moses was, was telling, you know, basically teaching them that majority, majority doesn't always know what is best. And sometimes following majority can have unforeseen tragic consequences. It is far too easy to get pulled along by the crowd. This is, you know, in contrast is, you know, we're in the world, but not of the world. The world is doing a whole, the world is a mess, uh, as we all know. I mean, it's upside down. What is good is being called evil. What is evil is being called good at this point in time. And we should not be following things in the world. It is not a good thing. We need to, we're set apart. We need to stay separate from that. Yes, we need to function in this world, but we do not need to follow along and get pulled along by, by the world and be part of the worldly ways and listen to everything the world is saying because that's a perfect example of, of not walking in faith and trusting our God. And, you know, we can start talking about countless things in our own world that have that have occurred even recently that people ran to and fro in fear and didn't reach out to God. God had the answer. God always has the answer. There's nothing that surprises God. He he knows everything that's gonna happen. So we can have perfect peace, perfect shalom just resting in him no matter what's going on in our world. And yes, our world is, can be very chaotic at times. And, you know, and if you, if you hone in on, on the ways of the world, you are going to be honed into fear. And that's not from God. So we need to remove ourselves, you know, when you're feeling that and feeling the intensity of the world around you, and go to God. Go to God in prayer. He will give you the peace that passes all understanding. You will find your spirit in, in a sense of peace. We have a promise of etern you know, eternal life that was given to us from Yeshua. If you're born again and saved, what in this world should we even be afraid of? Amen? Amen. We've got eternity, which is forever. God will not desert us. But there, you know... <sighs> He will never desert us. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. So, be, you know, the people realize that they, 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 they made a horrible mistake. They, they, they wanted to, to, to rectify it, but it was too late. So, but they weren't listening also to Moses or to God, who said, don't go up and 
try to fight for this land because I'm not going to be with you. And they didn't listen. They, they again rebelled. They continued to rebel. So um, that's the other thing. You know, we also gain an understanding from this that although God can forgive when we repent for not following him, we cannot escape the consequences of actions. And that's what happened to these people. But they, they, they still were not willing to listen. They wanted to do it their own way and try to make it, you know, try to fix it themselves. But it didn't work out. We also see um, that Moses is giving his parting words. In less than 40 days, he will, be, he, he will die. Uh, Moses will not be crossing the Jordan uh, with the Israelites, so he takes this opportunity to point the people toward Adonai and impress on this new generation the importance of heeding his instructions. And as they move forward, he wants them to be aware of their tendency to get into trouble, but self-examination will help them bear fruit. He also wants them to remember that their strength is in the Lord himself. It is Yahweh whom they will follow as they cross the Jordan to take the land. In that land, they will experience a drastic lifestyle change. They will no longer journey through the wilderness under his leadership, but will live in an abundant land under Joshua's leadership. And he wants the people to internalize the message that despite their disobedience and grumblings, God carried them throughout their 40-year journey through the wilderness, the way a father carries his children. And although they experience a change, they will require great effort on their part. But Adonai will be with them. And we need, we need to look at that too. When there's seasons of change in our lives, look to God. We can trust him and confidently move forward. Wait for what he's telling you to do and then move forward. Amen. Amen. On this Shabbat, it, it is also known as Shabbat Kazan. We prepare for Tisha B'Av. We re also remember um, that the first temple was destroyed on Tisha B'Av, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit when we get into the half Torah. Uh, because of idolatry and wickedness in the second temple, because of baseless hatred among, among each other, and especially of Yeshua. This is not the end of the, of the story, though. Yeshua will return to Israel when the third temple is built, and there is a national turning to him, as the prophet Zechariah foretells. I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. That's seen in Zechariah. Chapter 12, verse 10. Oh, how we look forward to this wonderful day of grace and changed hearts, where we truly have the house of Israel, the full house of Israel with us. And many of us are, you know, are born again and saved. And um, so we have Jew and Gentile already, one body and Messiah, but we're looking to those of our brothers and sisters who have yet to um, accept Yeshua to come to him, to come to the knowledge that Yeshua is, is the only Messiah that was, is, and is to come. And some of us participated in the, the Isaiah fast um, back uh, in May. And uh, so... That was one of the purposes. That was the purpose of that, to pray for Israel, to pray for Israel, those that are in Israel that have not yet accepted Yeshua. These are our brothers and sisters. And yes, for, for, for the Gentiles, the same. They're your brothers and sisters. We are all one family in Yeshua. Yeshua is our Lord and Savior, and we're all born again through him and him alone. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go uh, on to the half Torah portion, which is Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 31. It is a short half Torah portion uh, in comparison to uh, last week. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, 
Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. A nation sick with sin, listen, heavens, and hear, earth, for Adonai has spoken. Sons I have raised and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. So here again, we're fast forward when we're talking about the rebellion that occurred through the, the wilderness years, and they were warned. Uh, but as we see through the Bible, the backsliding that took place over and over and over again, and we see that in the book of Judges. Um, and we see this through, you know, the prophets are warning the people uh, and they didn't listen to the prophets in, in most cases. Okay. Sons I have raised and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its, its manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Oi! A sinful nation, a people weighed down with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons dealing corruptly. They have abandoned Adonai. They have despised Israel's holy one. They have turned backwards. Where will you be struck again as you stray away more and more? The whole head is sick, and the heart, the whole heart is faint. From the foot to the head, there is no soundness. Wounds, bruises, and raw sores not pressed, nor bandaged, nor softened with oil. Your land is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your fields, strangers devour it in your presence. A desolation overthrown by strangers. So the daughter of Zion is left as a sukkah in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless Adonai Sabaot had left us a small remnant, we would have been as Sodom. We would have been as Gomorrah. We know what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. They were destroyed for the wickedness in that those in that area. Hear the word of Ananias, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the Torah of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Worthless offerings. For what is it to me, the multitude of your sacrifice? Says Ananias. I am full of burnt offerings of rams and fat of fed animals. I have no delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or he goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand, trampling my courts? Bring no more worthless offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Shabbat, the calling of convocations, I cannot endure it. Iniquity with solemn assembly, your new moons and your festivals, my soul hates. They are a burden to me. I am weary to bear them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you multiply prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Okay. What he's saying here is, you know, they're, they're, they're continuing to do, um, to, to come with offerings. And they're continuing, you know, the, the, the ceremonial things, but their heart is not in it. It's just words rolling off of their lips. They're really not into it because they're doing everything against um against the lord so it's what he's saying is is your 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 ceremonies and your sacrifices are making me sick because you're not really being faithful to me you're serving other gods you're doing this you're doing that and um so i i really i really don't want your 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 ceremony either when we look at Psalm 51 and we read Psalm 51, you know, when David had sinned, he actually made that statement to Adonai and he knew he was very rich and he could, David could have given, a, you know, an endless supply of sacrifices and offerings because he was rich. He could do that. But he knew that that is not what God was looking for. He, he knew that God was looking for true repentance, a contrite heart, a sorrowful heart that, that truly wanted to be forgiven and was not going to go and repeat it over and over again. And this is what is happening with the people. It, it, it's not happening with the people. They are just going through the motions of ceremony. It's just like you or I would go into synagogue or, or to, to church and we're just going, you know, on our routine weekly basis and than going and living like the rest of the world. So um, this is what he's saying to them. You know, you're, you're sinning constantly, and then you want to come in and give me your offerings and your, serv your, your ceremony, like, you know, it, it's just a ritual. 
and basically rituals are and he's he's addressed them before you know you're keeping rituals just like the pagans do and really you know your your heart is not true to me so um that is what he he is addressing the next segment scarlet sins as snow wash and make yourselves clean put away the evil of your deeds from before my eyes Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, relieve the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. He's telling them what he wants them to do. Come now, let us reason together, says that and I. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will become like wool, if you are willing and obey. And this is also speaking of what you know Yeshua did for us. He was cleansing us of our sins if you are willing and obey you will eat the good of the land but if you refuse and rebel you will be devoured with the sword for the mouth of that and i have spoken so he's basically telling them you know and, and he told uh benai israel he told the children of israel back when you know moses was instructing them you know if you follow my mitzvah, if you follow my commandments, if you're true to me, uh, you will be blessed. But if you're not, you'll be cursed and the land will vomit you out. And he used those words to the people. You will not be able to remain in the land. Restore the faithful city, how the faithful city became a harlot. She once was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross. Your wine diluted by water. Your princes are rebellious and friends with thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and chases after rewards. What sounds like the world we live in today. Look at some of our leaders. They'll take bribes. They'll take for rewards. They don't care if they're doing good, good or evil. Uh, it's all for their own gain, personal gain. We, we can see it. And it's been going on for a long time, as we know. Uh, if we want to be honest and look at the world we live in, this is this is where our whole world is at this point too. They do not defend the orphan, nor does a widow's case come to them. Therefore, says the Lord Adonai Sabaoth, the mighty one of Israel, Oi, I will get relief from my foes and avenge myself on my enemies, and I will turn my hand on you. Purge away your droves and remove all your alloy. I will restore your judges as at first, your counselors. As at the start, afterwards you will be called city of righteousness, faithful city. Zion will be redeemed with justice, her repentant with righteousness. But there will be a crushing of transgressors and sinners together, forsaking Adonai. They will be consumed, for they will be ashamed of the sacred oaks that you desired and embarrassed because of the gardens that you have chosen. For you will be like an oak of withering leaf like a garden that has no water. So the strong will become tinder and his work like a spark. Both will burn together and no one will quench them. That's the end of the half Torah portion. So we're going to review, um, just do a, do a recap, a quick recap of both the, the Torah and the half Torah portion uh, before we take a break. Again, parasha Devarim means the words and on the first of Shabbat, um, 37 days before his passing, Moses begins his repetition of the Torah to the assembled children of Israel, reviewing the events that occurred and the laws that were given in the course of their 40 year journey from Egypt to Sinai to the promised land, rebuking the people for their failings and iniquities and enjoining them to keep the Torah. I'm, I'm sorry, this was the 11th month. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so he is about to die, but he's trying to empower this next generation because it was, it was the first generation that had failed to, to keep, in faith with the Lord. Moses recalls his appointment of judges and magistrates to ease his burden of meeting out justice to the people and teaching them the word of, of Adonai, the journey from Sinai through the great and fearsome desert, the sending of the spies and the people's subsequent 
spurning of the promised land so that Adonai decreed that the entire generation of the Exodus would die out in the desert. Um, and Moses said, also against me, God was angry for your sake, saying, you too shall not go in there. Remember, he he got so angry with the people. He was supposed to speak to the rock to show God's, God's uh, to give glory to God. And he was so angry with the people. He, he got carried away and forgot himself and struck the rock. And of course, you know, water, you know, God did allow water to come out. But then he rebuked both him and Aaron and said, you did not give me the glory. And you did not follow my directions, and neither one of you are going into the promised land. We know that Miriam actually died before Aaron, and then Aaron died, um, and now uh, Moses is about to die, and Joshua will be taking over. Moses also recounted some more recent events, the refusal of the nations of Moab and Aaron to allow the Israelites to pass through their countries, the wars against um, the Amorite kings Sihon and, and Enob, and the settlement of their lands by the tribes of Reuben, Gab, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and Moses' mes message to the successor, Joshua, who will take the people into the land and lead them into battle for its conquest. To, to not be fearful, to, for, the Lord, uh, for the Lord, your God, he shall fight for you. So he was encouraging Joshua. So in, in the half Torah portion, this is the third of a series of three half Torah of, of affliction. The three half Torah are read during the three weeks of mourning for Jerusalem uh, between the fast of the 17th of Tammuz and the 9th of Av, which we've been reading uh, in our half Torah portion. Isaiah relays to the Jews a godly vision he experienced, chastising the res residents of Judah and Jerusalem for having rebelled against God, criticizing them for repeating their errors and not abandoning their simple ways, even after having been reprim reprimanded and punished. Woe to a sinful nation, a heavy, a people heavy with iniquity, evil doing seed, corrupt children. They forsook God, provoked the Holy One of Israel. Harsh words were employed comparing uh, the Jewish leaders to the rulers of Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adonai stated his distaste for their sacrifices and offerings, which were flavored with pagan customs. How had she become a harlot, a faithful city? It was once full of justice, in which righteousness would lodge, but now it is a city of murderers. Isaiah then spoke gentle words, encouraging the people to repent sincerely and to perform acts of ju ju justice and kindness towards the needy orphans and widows, and promising them the best of the land in return for their obedience. And we, we, we saw that in the words that that we read. If your sins prove to be like crimson, they will become white as snow. If they prove to be red as crimson dye, they shall become as wool. The Haftarah uh, continues on with a promise that God will eventually reestablish Israel's judges and leaders. And we read that when Zion shall be redeemed through justice and her penitence through righteousness. The first word of the Haftarah is Kazan, the vision of Isaiah. The Shabbat, when the half -tar this is the Shabbat, um, this is the Shabbat before Tisha B'Av, because Tisha B'Av is this coming week. It is called Shabbat Kazan this week, the Shabbat of vision. So, and the vision that most are seeing is the vision of the third holy temple that will be rebuilt with the coming of Mashiach. So we know um, Tisha B'Av, is a morning of the first two temples. So the vision looking forward is um, is that third temple. Now we who are born again and saved know we don't really need a temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we really don't need it, um, but it is needed to fulfill prophecy and to fulfill end time prophecy. It is in the Bible and not one thing that is written in this Bible will be left undone, amen? Amen. Well, that is the end of the half Torah, the Torah and the half Torah portion. And we are going to uh, close with a prayer and then we will uh, take a short break and come back with the second part of Shabbat. Father God, we thank you for this very powerful word. We thank you that you're a loving God. And we also thank you that we know that we can trust in you and pray that we 
keep our faith vision and keep our eyes focused on you and not let the, the, the deceit and the fear mongering of the world around us interfere with anything that you have said you would do. You're a God that we can trust. You're a God that is holy, faithful, and true, and you never lie. And we can count on your word to be true. So even if things get rocky, we can focus on what you have said you are going to bring us through. And we can rest in perfect peace with you. When the world is rocky, we can turn to you. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And in that, we can count on. And we thank you so much, Father God. We give you all the glory. There is no one like you. And we can fully, fully, fully trust in you. We love you, Father God. We give you all of our praise. All honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the name above all names, the most mightiest name of all, the name of our King, of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Take a short break and we will come back with